Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Herd Fit Podcast with Dr. Sam Marie and myself, Coach David Syverson. This podcast is aimed at helping anyone and everyone looking to enhance their healthy lifestyle through fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, mindset. And welcome back to the Herd Fit Podcast. I am Coach David Syverson here with my co-host, Dr. and Coach Sam Marie. We have an interesting topic today. We are going to talk about when you need to take a break from CrossFit. And this is an awkward topic coming from a gym owner. That's livelihood is based on a CrossFit and members paying their dues and not taking a break from CrossFit, right? But I've always tried to be more human than business owner. That's been one of my things I've done or I've tried to do since we opened in 2014. I care about the people more than the business. And that kind of might sound contradictory, but it's true. I do. I care about people's feelings and lives and improving their lives. And sometimes, not all the time, a break from CrossFit is what's needed. You know, and it's such a good topic. I was running at 35 degrees in <laughs> 6 a.m. this morning, and I was asking myself, is Maybe now the- <laughs> a good time to take a break from co- CrossFit? Because I think so. I think I think I need to. You and Susan both came. It, I was talking about you guys later on. You guys look so cold and bundled up when you came in. I was like, oh, my God. Like four layers. Susan's like, can you take two minutes off my time today? Because I have to put on, on off and on all these layers every single time. It's going to be a, a long winter. <laughs> Long winter. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think that this really applies to, I, I want to say this should only apply to people that have been in the game for years, multiple years, not not a year, not two years even. You've been doing CrossFit for three, four plus years, and you are at the point where you're approaching or you are currently going through a burnout stage. And we've touched on this topic a couple of different ways, but I have actually don't think I've actually come up with like a template answer on when I think someone does need to step away. And we just got done talking last week with Ron, who that was one of my f- favorite episodes we've ever done before, Absolutely. just listening. I mean, he, he talked for 95% of it, and that's the way it should be when a guy like that is on. And it's just like, as he was talking about that, I was talking about, I was thinking about this week's episode where he was very like, don't ever quit because it's going to set you up for quitting other things in your future. And when I say taking a break, I don't mean that as quitting. And I just want to make sure I get that out there. Because Ron himself, he said he has taken breaks and he comes back, right? Like this hurts, took a break, come back. So I want to kind of talk about why reasons. And this discussion has come up with a few different people over the past few weeks. That's why it's kind of like in the front of my mind that I kind of just want to get some of these thoughts out there because I know that there are other, other people probably thinking about the same thing. CrossFit is a very... If you're really highly involved in a CrossFit, it, it can be pretty rigorous, like a 24-7, 365 type thing. Like you think about it this day, you're there that day, you think about your workout after, you think about your workout before, you're buying all this equipment, you're strapping all these things onto your body before you work out. You're here at 35 degree weather at 5 a.m. running outside with a bunch of people in the dark. <laughs> you know, there's a lot to it that can really beat you up, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. Let's touch on that a little bit. Yeah. And the reason I would say that that's more of an issue with CrossFit than, say, other fitness activities is because there is the community aspect, too. Yeah. I mean, if you know a CrossFit athlete and they're really into it. That's all they effing do. Like that, I get made up. I get made so much fun of from my friends who are not CrossFitters. Like, yeah. what's the first rule of CrossFit? <laughs> Always talk about CrossFit, and it's just because your friends, you're all like minded. Yeah. You you do share a very a lot of commonalities. Mm-hmm. You do have very painful workouts you go through. You yeah. talk about, you talk about your recovery, you talk about your health, you talk about what it's, your goals are. Yeah, it's just and, always there. And it's always there. So I can understand how it can be very pervasive. It can be surrounding you constantly. And know what even surrounds us even more that you didn't touch on is the social media aspect, right? Like right. What we're interested in pops up on our phone. Whether we choose that or not, right? Like someone's always listening to you. But like when you're surfing through Instagram, whether they're posts, stories, reels, right? If you're into CrossFit and it's been that way for a long time and it's a lot of the accounts that you follow and the things that you like and the things that you post yourself, that's going to appear on your phone. And we are all on our phones every single day, some more than others. But everyone I know is, for the most part, on their phone at some point surfing, sur- surfing a social media outlet, right? And that's... Even in your time where you're not at the gym or you're not with people from the gym and talking about it, it's now in your face again. And it really creates even stronger subconscious thoughts that you really feel like you, quote, can't escape from. Yeah. And it's just always around us. And that really can create these hurdles for us, right? We could talk about 
physical, mental, emotional hurdles really quick. The physical hurdles are a little bit obviously, right? You work out a lot. This stuff is never going to be easy. I think that's something that you just always have to know and you can always scale, right? You can always dial back the intensity. You can always not be competitive, but I don't think you're ever going to be a, a true CrossFitter and have easy workout after easy workout after easy workout. It, it's always going to be hard. It's never easy. And it just depends on how much you really want to work to overcome those hurdles. Right. And like, for example, even this morning, I don't think I was hydrating really well this week. Mm -hmm. I've been kind of busy and I had these awful leg cramps mm. and I was like, oh my God, there's going to be so much running and jumping and jumping. And I felt, I, you know, at our gym, you have to sign up the night before. Yeah. And I'm one of those people because I coach, I, I hate the melt. I hate the people that sign up the night before and then don't show up the next morning. No, that's a good way of putting it, the uh, melt. Yeah. I understand why. And sometimes yeah. you have to. Sometimes they're valid reasons yeah. for sure. But there are some people that consistently sign up, never show, sign up, never show. Yep. And I, I don't want to be one of those people. Right. So I was like, well, I already signed up. Yep. I know it's Dave and he's going to judge. <laughs> <laughs> he's the coach. And I said, you know, I... Let me just show up and see what happens. Right. And and I do that about 99% of the time. Yeah. And let me just show up and see what happens. Yeah. Some days, there are very few days I'm going to say, I'm going to kill this. This is okay. my workout. Yeah. Most days I'm like, hmm, all right, let me see what happens. Mm -hmm. And it went it went fine. And I got warmed up. Everything felt okay. Yeah. Started slow. Got faster. And it went really well. And I was so glad after that I did do it. But right. on the other hand, there can be many people where that hurdle is just too high. You've done it too often. Mm -hmm. And now you're just like, yeah. oh, that, that. Now it becomes mental too. And then it becomes, the physical turns into the mental. Yeah, like the, the mental hurdle. And like, we can say the mental hurdle is, oh my God, these workouts are hard. But I think sometimes I want to go deeper than that mm -hmm. or. Or, or in a, on a different road, I should say. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about today's workout. Like you come in, I'm not going to go over the workout for, for the people that don't come here. It's not that important. But I had a workout with a few different movements, but the order of the movements changed every two rounds, blah, 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 right? There's intervals, there's rest, there's running. There's a lot of different scaling options. I can see, especially with newer people, you come in, you start writing this workout on the whiteboard. And you're, like, there's so many things you have to think about. It was scary. The weights, the movements. What happens if I start failing these? What happens if then I have to look at the clock and write down my time so that I know when I'm starting up again? And I know that sometimes, and we've talked about this with our coaching staff, like sometimes my workouts, that we probably can't, they're a little too detailed and they're a little harder to follow. And they're easier for me to follow because I thought about them and wrote them. Where if you're someone coming off the street, it's just like, it's a lot to take in. And sometimes, a lot of times, people come to the gym to escape their, the mental rigors of life. And they don't want to have to process it. They, like, they love being told what to do, having something simple, going home and living the rest of their life. And I think as you start approach, approaching a burnout stage, if that is your thought process, right, I bet you're very close or you're in that stage of being burned out. Like at the end of the day, the workout – they're never that complicated. You had to maybe think about it for two, three minutes and then yeah. you're good to go. Yeah. But if you're in that stage where like, oh, I have to write this, oh, I have to do this, oh, how am I going to do this? And you're getting overwhelmed and you get this anxiety. That's a point where it's like, all right, we got to change something up. Have you ever been to that point where you felt burnt out, where you got to that stage mentally? Yeah. I mean, with training, yes. Ever to like walk away from like CrossFit training? No. But like having my own coach, right? And being on a different program and being by myself. But to me, that was more lifestyle based where I was just so sick of having to make the schedule around the classes and then Ash and then Brock and then my coaching and then my other training, right? That got, that burned me out a little bit, like to the point I just didn't want to do it. But I don't, I actually, in those moments, that's when I would return to like, I'm just doing classes this week. Yes. And because I love that. I love being like, it's the environment that I love. So is that what you would call a break is dialing it down? Or are you calling a break like stopping it completely? So I, I do think a break should always be unless it's physical. If it's physical, I think there might be there might need to be time away from the gym based on how serious it is, right? Although we do have people here in f who just had an elbow surgery. I was just thinking of John, John Raymond, who has been in a boot for a long time. He had a severe ankle sprain on vacation, came into the gym, 
four days a week right. and had to change every single workout by himself in the back of the gym. And for the most part, he was doing the same thing every single week. Skier. Yeah, skier, push-ups, bench, sit-ups, hollow rocks, right? Probably not the most fun thing in the world at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. In certain situations, if you have a really serious surgery, like, yeah, like I think it's okay to take a physical break from doing anything. Well, would, yeah. I, would I? No. Yeah. I would always want to do something. But I think that w- what is more common is people get the, to the mental or emotional part where like they it's too hard for them to get up early in the morning because it's now 40 degrees right it's their best friend doesn't work out with them in the morning anymore or at night anymore and they just don't want to be around other people right those are the times where a break to me would not be walk away from the program or walk away from your crossfit go to orange theory go to f45 it would be go less but keep going and that's kind of a message that we heard from ron last week right it's okay to take your volume down or take the intensity down, but the fact that you're not quitting, right? The fact that you keep showing up, is this might not be as often, that should be your break. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So that that's where that that's where I wanted to <clears throat> take that a part of the conversation. Now I want to talk about the the pros and cons to taking a break, right? So now we kind of just turned like, what is a break? Could it be we don't want it to be quitting, we want you to keep showing up maybe just a little bit less, right? The advantage of doing this is I actually think it can help you appreciate your CrossFit training regimen more than you used to. I do think in time, and this is going to sound like bitter gym owner talk, I think people start to lose appreciation for what a quality CrossFit has done for their life and what it's continuing to do for their life and what it's actually trying to do for your life, right? Because we know a lot of people over the past nine years, it's been a long time now, right? different phases of life, right? Like I, if I'm going to be selfish and talk about myself, it's, you know, pre-kid and post-kid, like everything, a lot of things change. So we as coaches, we as owners, we as, we as just members of the community, we deal with people differently now than we did seven years ago, even though it's the same person based on what's going on in their life. Absolutely. And we will do that for the next X amount of years that we're here and they're here. And sometimes, and like, we never want, like, we never, we were uncomfortable getting thank yous and attention. It's not why we're doing it. I'm saying from the athlete's perspective, if you can self-reflect a little bit while you're taking your break, right? And really start to see how much you appreciate, how unique this is, how unique cross it is to helping improving your life. Thoughts on that? Wait. So this is the advantage of taking a break oh. is actually can it cause yeah. some reflection on how much this has actually done for you and kind of set you up for the future yes i think that 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 advantage comes not immediately when yeah. you take your break Correct. but after you've sort of taken your break yeah and i and the reason why is is i'm i'm just thinking of when i needed to take a break mm-hmm. and what situation that sort of came upon and it was like i was very very intense and i was training really hard All right and I think that the clean and jerks the other day really sort of brought that home to me. Yeah. Because I had, when I was posting a lot on Instagram and yeah. I actually went back and looked at it after my clean and jerks that I did yep. a couple of days ago. And then I went back and I said, hmm, what did they look like back then? Because I looked and I was hitting like 245 mm-hmm. regularly. Yeah. And what my struggle was, was jerking the 245. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa. And then today, like, no, the other day when I was doing the clean and jerks, like, I struggled to hit 215 mm-hmm. and I failed at 225. And okay. I was like, whoa, I'm like 30 some pounds off of where I was then. And I was so intense. Mm-hmm. I was so into it. But then I also remembered, oh, my elbow was hurting a lot, though, a lot. back yeah. then. Yep. Like I wasn't feeling very good back then. Right. And it was shortly after that that I sort of backed up, like down, dialed it down, mm-hmm. you know, took, you know, less train, you know, did less training, yep. less volume. Yep. And so Which could be termed as taking a break. That was a break. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe it's a permanent break at this yeah, point where right. I'm just taking classes and enjoying it. But right. so there is some regret. There's actually a lot of regret. So I, I feel two ways about it. I okay. feel like sorry that I, I haven't made progress and I've sort of actually lost some progress. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, I feel way better than I did back then. Well, I yeah. So like you said, that could be a catch-22. And I think in terms of, we talked about this, knowing what your goals are, what do you actually want to get out of CrossFit, right. like your 245 versus 215. Other than the fact that it's a higher number than the other, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't. And no, it, it, but yeah, if, it does but matter to me. Though. If you're feeling, if your physical feeling in your elbow is better, oh, you feel yes. healthier. Yes. Like, so that appreciation I have, right. but it took a while to get there. Right. Because when I took that break, I was like, I have to. I right. almost had to. Yeah. Because I just couldn't really do anything. Right. It was hurting too much. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, but now I, I do have that appreciation, but right. there's still a little bit of 
regret there too. Human being. Yeah, like I don't think that's ever going to change. You're human, right? Like you, you're always going to wish you could do a little bit more. Is there a way to get there without injuring the elbow? And maybe there is. Well, I was going to ask you, that, are you going to program, are we doing more of a clean cycle in the future or a clean I mean, jerk cycle? I mean, pre-open, we just did like a lot of cleans over the summer. Yeah. Okay. That was like, that was like clean and jerk was like our big strength over the summer. But okay. right now we're into like the, more like the powerlifting mode. But I do think the strength, the back squats that we're doing have helped are going to help next yeah. time we go to the clean jerks. Like we can't just clean and jerk to get the clean and jerk better. Right. right? So now I, I even compare some of these breaks that we're talking about. Like when I go away on vacation, right? I normally don't work out. I usually eat what I want, drink what I want, right? That that's another that to me like that's a break from like the lifestyle mm -hmm. of being athlete, gym mm -hmm. owner, coach, set mm -hmm. the example, right? Mm -hmm. But when I come back, I always like can't wait to get back to the gym. Mm. Like I know Dave and Britt just got back from their honeymoon. They were gone, I think, for almost two weeks. You know, our ten day, ten days, fourteen days, they and looked uh, amazing, awesome, yeah. And they were back at the gym this morning. It was great to see them, and you could tell like it, it's it's fun to be back. Like it's almost like you appreciate. Not that those guys don't show appreciation; they show a ton of appreciation. They're mm -hmm. a huge part of the community now. But mm -hmm. I think that. When you take that break, whether it's a honeymoon or a selected break like that, mm -hmm. you come back and you're, you actually feel invigorated a little bit better. And some people, like in your case, the elbow starts to feel a bit better and you start to appreciate that side, mm -hmm. of, the, side of the CrossFit angle. Mm -hmm. But now we could turn this into the disadvantage of taking a break, which you already kind of opened up, which some of your numbers might go down. Yeah. And I think that that's something when people come up to me and say like, hey, I'm going to take a break, whether it's I'm quitting for the next two months, freeze my membership whether it's I'm going to go from five days a week to one day a week, that's something that you need to kind of say to yourself prior to doing that there's a good chance your numbers or your performance or your quality of movement, your gymnastics capacity, ability, right? It's mm -hmm. going to go backwards. Yeah. And you have to be okay with that. And you can't be surprised. That happens a lot. People are like, I lost my muscle ups. I'm like, you haven't done a strict pull up in three months. Like, what do you expect? Right. And, but yeah, I can't say that, but you know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's kind of, that, that's where I think that the thought process needs to go be, as you're taking your break. Like I have someone that was a 5 a.m. or that is taking a break again for, you know, it's happened a lot over the years. Every time he comes back, he's like, oh, I can't do this anymore. I'm like, well, That's yeah. the problem. I think if you take too frequent a break, yeah. it, it's almost a negative feedback loop because right. – you come back, you're not as good as you were, you get frustrated, yeah. you try, maybe you try too hard or you don't deal with it well, then you right. gotta take another break mm -hmm. and you just kind of, you spiral. So I, I, I mean, I know this is about the pros and cons about taking breaks, but yeah. I would be like, you gotta be pretty judicious if you really care about your fitness, right. about your performance, yeah. if you're a little bit more on the performance side, like we all have some performance aspirations, Absolutely. Yeah. even as fitness, oriented yeah. athletes yeah yeah i i don't that bothers me mm -hmm. it really does mm -hmm. and even though listen i like i'm not going to the games right. i don't I, like it doesn't really matter but it does matter to me right like i know if i have the potential to do better yeah i should do better mm -hmm. and and that's what too many frequent breaks so will get you my suggestion for you and i think there's probably a couple of people in that same boat would be it, it's tough like you hear games athletes talk about this all the time that are no longer training at that level it's like it takes them a while for them to accept that they're not gonna ever do what they used to do. Am I saying that to you? Absolutely not. But what you could do, and I've heard a couple of them talk about this, is once you kind of get out of that initial like, all right, I'm no longer there with my clean and jerk at 245, but right now you're at 215. Why can't this be your starting point? Why does 245 have to be your starting point? Why is that the barometer? Like if you really wanted to work on your clean and jerk and get that back up to whatever, right? I think your current PR is 215. So now you just, you cycle a lot of work in at 185, 195, 205, like clean that shit up, right? And then the back squat program should help a little bit. We do some lifting off the rack, right? Am I telling you to do extra work? No, but could there be an extra session per week that would kind of feed into that goal? Yeah, but I think the starting point, it's a moving target. And that's hard to accept, but I think that's what it is as we get older and we are kind of i don't want to call us weekend warriors because we work hard all week but we're not just training for performance that's not the only reason why you're here you are here for health you do want to feel good you don't want to come in like you did for a couple of years like banged up right but yes you were and still are an incredible you know fitness specimen that a lot of people look up to but i think that that's that that moving target idea is something that a lot of us could do after we take a break all right where am i now all right like i'm, ha I'm having someone leave the gym right now just for a little bit some personal issues right 
And when they come back, I don't want that to be like, where'd my muscle ups go? Like, hey, you're starting from scratch. Now let, let's see how many strict pull-ups in a row you can do. All right, let's see how many chest bar pull-ups you can do in a row. And then we move on. I think some of this is going to have to be, to be me realizing, <coughs> is this my ego? Yeah. Or right. is this just me trying to be the best person that I can be? Right. And if I can put my ego aside, but also I, you know, have this realization that there is this desire that I need to see where I can fulfill my potential. Yeah. That's where it's going to come from because, you know, it, you, everyone sort of sees it like they, and this gym is very inspirational in that sense too. Like I see a lot of athletes and they are putting that time in and mm. they are doing amazing things. Yep. And I'm like, you know what, what could I do? Yeah. Not that I want to be Dave Boak, right. but I'm like, if look at what he's doing and what he, he's achieving. Mm -hmm. Now, what could I do if I put more time in and, and focus and what could I achieve? Because yeah. I've been sort of not doing that for a while. So, yeah. so maybe a break is good in the sense that it helps sort of restore and, and build that mental desire yeah. again and, 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 then, and then sort of coalesce it and then suddenly it like comes into something. How do we get you back to being better than ever? Like that's the next part of, of the outline. It's like taking a break that should not always be associated with like too hard for me, too busy. I got too much going on. It could just be like, hey, I mean, we see this in peaking athletics all the time. Like if you know anything about like peak performance and real strength and conditioning programs and real like performance-based programs, like there are ups and downs. There's ebbs and flows with all of them. And I think that you taking a break could simply just be your down track. But this could eventually lead to you being a better version of yourself than you've ever been, right? But like, I think it all starts with reflection what you're doing you know you you watch around you observe you need to be inspired and then you need needs to turn into motivation then your motivation needs to turn into discipline right do stuff when you don't want to do it and then it comes down to you know being consistent with it right like it's what, probably one of the more cliche things with cross it but i think what you could do is part of your reflection process is what got you to that i mean i don't want to keep bringing up your clean and jerk because i feel like you've gotten so many so much better with other movements of crossfit but like let's stick on it right let's say 245 is the goal at some point right mm -hmm. what got you there you know back then like you reflect on that it probably was the extra volume that you're doing the extra work all that lifting that you send me those videos in your garage and yeah. that probably was a big part of it right but it also brought up some negative so what are some things that we can take from that extra training period and put it into your future when you do want to attack it again, if you want to attack it again, for the reason of you want to hit that number. And, you know, I, I think that there are ways to that goal that don't need to exactly replicate what you did back then. And I think that's something that just a lot of conversation, a lot of self-reflection on, all right, maybe this is what really helped me get there, a squatting program, mm -hmm. not doing EMOM clean and jerks every two days. Mm -hmm. You know, like it could have been a little bit more technique work that's not as intense with 95 pounds instead of, you know, 185 pounds off the rack. Like mm -hmm. there's probably a lot of speed work and accuracy work that you can go because like, we're developed. You're a much more developed athlete now than you were back then. Just like, you know, you understand it more. I do understand it more. And me as your coach, I understand it more. The people that you talk with Susan, she understands it more. Mm -hmm. And I think that with, with time should an experience should come more knowledge. Maybe that's not always the case with every coach, every athlete. Mm -hmm. Like we see people just going in a circle mm -hmm. all the time, right? Throughout mm -hmm. the year. Mm -hmm. But I think that's part of what someone can do when they come back from a break is, all right, what did I do wrong last time that I really want to avoid? What did I do right this time? And what's something new I can try in my pursuit of that goal? So the break isn't really necessarily stopping yeah. your brain activity, your physical activity. Yeah. It's actually taking that time and reflecting on yeah how to get your next cycle or ebb or yeah. flow going. I'll tell you what, man, like if, if someone used to work out at five, you know, five days a week and we cut it down to two because this is, that's their break. Like, Hey, yo, cherry pick the wads this week, come in twice. But those days that you don't come in, go for an hour walk. Mm -hmm. Like I've told people to do that. Like think about the amount of time it takes you to get ready for the gym, mm -hmm. drive to the gym, mm -hmm. warm up, stretch. You're just talking about an hour and a half, two hour commitment, go for an hour walk. You'll still have more time. Right. And like, because I know I've, I've had people tell me this all the time is, hey, go think and reflect. I'm like, you know, what? I don't have the freaking time, dude. Like, I always have something to do. But if you take some workouts out of the session, you can just go for a simple walk or go wherever you can be zen. Right. 
I think that's that's an opportunity and start writing things down. It's hard if because of the community and you want to be here right. to say, all right, I'm just going to go hang out by myself and be a hermit for right. those days. Yep. Like, I think that's hard. Yeah, it like, can be. It like, can be. I want to be here because I like, I have my friends at 6 a.m. I right. like, you know, seeing them right. and talking to them yep. and working out with them. I mean, I think it's it's a long-term approach, you know? Like, I think if you, if you or someone took a two-month break of coming two days a week instead of five, I don't think in five months it's going to be an issue. Right, it's a long term goal. It might be a little hard early on because it takes you out of your routine, yeah. but it's for the sake of getting more out of this down the road. I think it, I think there's value in it. How do you take a break from social media? Because I am inundated with social. I have nothing but CrossFit, yeah, things that I follow on Instagram, and I see this wad, I see this, I see Rogue Invitational, I see blah, I see this. I know you always want to watch. There's always something to watch. I mean, it's a good question. I mean, I I've. I remember I've talked about this before. I think we, we've talked about doing an episode on this at some point, social media and CrossFit, but I don't really have the best advice because I think the only advice on it is go cold turkey. Like you just don't go on your phone. And I know, you know, my coach Mike talks about this all the time, like, you know, taking a social media break mm -hmm. and, you know, you get sucked in at some point or you want to go read something. And, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about there's a lot of good on social media too. There's some education you can get on social media. Mm -hmm. I have been less on social media in the past, I'd say eight to nine months. This all started back kind of like right around the open last year. How did you do it? Honestly, just cold turkey. Like, you know, if I want to read something, I'm not, it's not on social media. And I try to, I have other interests too outside of CrossFit, which also that helps to be honest with you. And that's what I spend my free time doing and reading and writing about and all that kind of stuff. And I simply just don't scroll and watch as much as I used to. And it does, it does help. It really does. Like I have found myself that I compare myself to other performing athletes a lot less now. Like I used to be so addicted to like, what's that person doing for the training? What's that person doing? That person beat me in that event last year. What are they doing now? Like I couldn't tell you what any one of the guys I'm competing with at legends are, has done with their training. Is that person. right? Yeah. I Cause you no used idea. to know everyone. I have no idea. Hmm. I saw the list of guys I'm competing against. I think I know two of them. Well, one got uh, busted for drugs. I mean, who? I mean, wasn't Nick Block one of the guys? Oh, last? no, no. Well, I'm talking about Legends this year. Oh, this year. Yeah, yeah. But yes, Nick, yeah. But, you know, those big stories, I'm never going to avoid them. Like, the morning chalk up, they send you the emails. Oh, I want to go read that. Like, I'm always in the game. I, it's my career. It's my profession. I should be in the game. But when it comes to, like, my personal training and mm -hmm. then the personal side of social mm -hmm. media, mm -hmm. and if that is something that kind of you might not know that subconsciously is kind of throwing you down this, like, mm -hmm. this dark place with CrossFit, mm. I don't, like I said, I don't have the best advice other than, mm -hmm. I mean, I've unfollowed a lot of accounts. Mm. There's a lot of accounts that I don't follow anymore. You know, I follow Nick Block now and he's bodybuilding. Yeah. He looks juiced to the gills. Oh, yeah. Like he just went all in on it. Yeah. So that was actually very satisfying to see that. Yeah. I mean, just let him go. And honestly, it's like Dave Lipson, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, it's, so I, I think sometimes the the best outlet for some of those guys that have that. I mean, there was definitely insecurity with them, right? Mm -hmm. When they were tra competing, they Very felt like they, so. they needed to take all these drugs yeah. to, you know, fulfill their self, you know, their prophecy, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, they cheated and they broke rules and they got caught. But, you know, I don't ever want to see people suffer for a long time if they made a mistake. And I think a good redemption story for some of those guys is just go all in on bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. You know, forget the competitive cross it seemed. So how do I reset my expectations after having taken a break here? So, uh, I, like I said, we touched on it earlier. I think coming in with new goals and starting from scratch. And how do I know when I'm supposed to do that? That's the other thing. I don't know when I'm supposed to be like, okay, my break is over. Now is the time. That's a good question because you might get addicted to that lifestyle of only coming in t t twice a week, <laughs> That's right? What I'm, I'm afraid yeah. of other – I mean, I know I, I don't think yeah, that, that would Yeah, that probably be... would never happen to you, but that right. would I, – I do th – I mean, it has happened. It's like there's case studies within our gym where, like, they took a break and they never came back because it's really hard to be – the person that used to do this but can no longer do this in a gym that is incredibly fit. It's yes. tough. It's very difficult. Yes. To quote Ron, you have to check the ego at the door, right? That gets old hearing after a while, but it's something you're never going to stop hearing. It's, we're going to say stuff like that at the gym all the time because if you can't, it's just not going to work for you. It's cross, it's too humbling. And so I, I think that when is the right time for you to come back? If you want a number on me, like I think less than a month. You know, like that, that would be me. Like, I think a, a, a lot happens in a month, right? Not a lot happens in a week. So like, that's like, if you want something objective like that, I would say like a month is a good time to take away. I also would maybe couple it if you can 
around time or you have a lot going on, whether it's a vacation, you have a lot of work coming up. There's certain people that have jobs that have very busy seasons mm -hmm. and adding to that stress could just make it, you know, send you to like a tailspin. So, you know, an example, if you're an accountant and, you know, April hits, like maybe that's the time for you to take a break. Or if you're a teacher and like the start of the school year is always tough for them, maybe that's the time you start to kind of dial it back for a little bit. So those are just a couple of examples. What do you think? When should someone come back from, like, I, how long is too long? That's a good question. I think you're right. The reason that a lot of people will not come back from that is the ego. Ego is such a mind killer. Yeah. And uh, I know, we could easily say like, don't have an ego, but we all have egos. Oh, we have egos. I have egos too, you and, know. And if I were to say, come back and be like, okay, you can't even do 215 now, but you know, you can only do like 135. Right. Like, whoa, where yeah. would I, where would I be sitting with that? Where yeah. I'm sitting at the 6 a.m. class and everyone else is doing 185 and I am, and I used to do that and now I'm doing 135. No. Yeah. I, I don't know how I would I don't know how I would feel about that. Yeah, I mean, let's see. I bet I bet it wouldn't be as bad as you think. I think it would be worse in the moment than it would be afterwards. And I think the stuff that is afterwards, the stuff that's going on in your head afterwards will last a lot longer than any sort of fulfillment or lack of fulfillment that you have from that particular workout. And, you know, I say that only because I kn I can, you know, like you said, I can think of at least three or four people right now yeah. where that might be the sort of thing going in their head. Oh, absolutely. And, and so I would say... The the thing that allows you to come back is one, don't let your ego dictate if and when you're going to come back. Mm -hmm. Like like Ron said, take it out of the equation. Mm -hmm. It's really about, you can do two ways of doing it. You can take it just like a, a set time yep. and say, all right, I'm going to give myself 30 days yep. or I'm going to give myself until the end of the tax season. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to see, like, and then I'm going to do it. Right. Or you could, I mean, a, a tougher goal would be to say, you know, when I mentally feel like I'm ready, because who knows when that's yeah. going to be. So I, I like think, I like having something yeah. objective. I think objective is is good. And then yeah. you, tr you try to come back with that and see where you are with that. I think that that's probably the safest. Thing. Last suggestion on that, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up, is, and I'll give anyone full permission to, if you want me to help you out with this, I can, because it's pretty easy, is if you take a break, right? Two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever. One of the things you could do is take the decision making out of your hands in terms of what you should do to scale workouts. Hit like, I don't want to pick 65 when the RX is 85 because all my girlfriends are doing 85 or all my guy friends are doing 135. I don't want to do 115. Hey coach, I just took my month off. What should I do for the workouts this week? What weights? Here you go. There's the decision. And then you evaluate how well you're recovering, right? It doesn't always have to be about the score. Like screw the score for, you know, your first couple of weeks back. How well do you f recover? How do you feel the next day and the day after that? And if the and if all signs are pointing north, you feel great. One of two things are going to happen: start increasing the loads or intensity, I should say, because that could be time or loads, right? Or you might actually start to like that. You might like that feeling that you dialed it back a little bit. You got a good workout in, and you feel like you're recovering. You feel like you're getting fitter, and you feel like you're not beat up every single morning. Or trying to strap things onto your body so that you can, you know, do a, do a squat the next day. Right. So I, I think that's something, that's something that, that those are two different angles. I think someone could have when they come back to set themselves up for future success. All right. Thank you guys for listening and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you everybody for taking the time out of your day to listen to the herd fit podcast. Be on the lookout for next week's episode.